14. Yeah. The title of the message this morning is Don't Be a Fool. Uh, the word in its various forms appears about 200 times in the Bible. Fool, fools, foolish, foolishly. Uh, yeah, there's one more. Anyway, it, it, it's, uh, it shows up quite a bit, so I always figure if God's put it in his word that many times, we need to find out what he has to say about it. And we will find out from Psalms and, and Proverbs that he has a lot to say about it. So again, the title of the message is Don't Be a Fool, <clears throat> and it's something I hadn't thought about. You know, uh, so how I came up with the title, I'm not sure, but it seems to be a, a, good, it seems to be a good workable title, and we'll see that. But, uh, you know, I've, I've done foolish things before. I've been involved in foolishness. Uh, I know fools, and uh, uh, I guess if you're involved in uh, foolishness and you've done things foolishly, then, you know, it stands to reason you're a fool. So, and, and we'll see what God thinks about that, but uh, let's open in prayer. Father, we do thank you for your word that instructs us, and we thank you so much that we have a copy of it. We can read it and study and meditate upon it and enjoy it and have it effectually work in us when we believe it. And we thank you for that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Okay, the first time that the word fool shows up in the Bible is in, uh, we're in Psalm 14, but the first time it shows up is uh, Genesis uh, chapter 3. And if you want something fun to read uh, this week, uh, start in verse 14 and go to the end of the chapter. But Laban, Laban calls Jacob a fool. So if you're interested in reading why he called him a fool, there, there's something to do this week. Again, that's Genesis chapter 3, verse 14 to the end of the chapter. But the word fool shows up a whole lot of, uh, I mentioned about 200 times, so I tried to take a look at most of them and try to develop a pattern here. And uh, uh, you can guess that God doesn't have a very high opinion of fools or foolishness. He's opposed to it. Let's start in uh, Psalm, chapter, Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool has said in their heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. So saying there is no God, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And we could say that too as believers. We can take the salvation that we have based upon our belief in the gospel that Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day. We can believe that and have salvation, but we can put that on the side and just go about our merry way and say, well, God's really got nothing to do with my life. And according to the uh, verse, that would be, a fool would do that. And uh, so anyway, uh, go to Psalm 73. And we've got a lot to look at, so I hope you're into turning some pages today, which is probably a good thing. You don't want to really necessarily hear what I have to say unless it's authoritative from the Word of God. My own opinion isn't worth much. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. And uh, there are three verses in Psalm 73 that uh, are autobiographical. Another passage in the scripture that is the same would be Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, which says that uh, we were dead in trespass and sins, but now he's made us alive. We're, we're alive unto God according to uh, Galatians, I mean, according to Romans chapter 6. But we were dead in trespass and sins, and before we were saved, that's who we were. But look at Psalm 73. Psalm 73, verse 22. So foolish was I and ignorant. Well, that's me. That was me. That's autobiographical. There I was. I mean, underline it. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thank God. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. And verse 24 is right now is probably my most favorite verse in the Bible. Uh, you know, it can tend to change from time to time. But 24 says, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. I don't know about you, but I need his counsel. That's one reason I go to the Word of God. It isn't just an academic thing to prove that I know this verse or that verse, but uh, I need guidance, instruction. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. So we're getting all this counsel. 
We're, we're learning how to live our lives in a way that honors and pleases God, and then voila, we'll be received to glory. That's a pretty nice ending to the matter. Psalm 92. Psalm 92, verse 5. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. Verse 6. A brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. Fools don't understand what God has to say. And for what it's worth, the, the word uh, brutish can be defined as carnal, ignorant, and stupid. You know, and it's hard, you, you, you know the saying, uh, who's going to call a fool a fool? Uh, it's even harder to, to, to pin that on yourself. It almost comes under self-judgment, which, uh, you know, it, there's even a verse we'll get to, you know, we don't judge ourselves, do we? According to the verse in Corinthians, who judges us? God. God judges us. And we'll, as we look at these verses, you, I think you're going to be able to draw the conclusion, again, that God doesn't think too much about fools and foolishness, but he's pretty, he's pretty adamant about it. He's pretty hard on fools and foolishness, but he should be. Uh, go to Proverbs. And we're gonna, the good thing is we're going to work through these from uh, left to right, and there's quite a few. There's a lot about fools. Proverbs, the first proverb, Proverbs 1. Verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That's the fear found in Psalm 33, 8, defined as, as awe. We're in awe of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You, you're in awe of God and what he's done. I mean, you can look up and see the stars and the creation, and you know what he's done, and you want, to, you want to know more about it. That's what the Bible says. We wanted to know more about it, and we've learned more about it, haven't we? We have. And he said, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. That's what fools do. And I won't comment a whole lot on everything, but this is, it just, this is what God has to say about fools. So if you know anybody that despises wisdom and instruction from God, it, God just calls them a fool. Uh, Proverb 10. I, I've got a list at home. I keep a lot of notes. I write stuff down a lot. And uh, the different terms that the Bible uses to define unbelievers. If you, I, I mean, there's a whole lot of them. There's probably 15 or 20 in the list, but it looks like one of them is a fool. What is an unbeliever? Is, is, is a fool. Uh, Proverbs 10, verse 8. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a, freight, a prating fool shall fall. Verse 18. He that hideth hatred with the lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Now this gets a little closer to home, okay? It's not just talk. There, there are verses in here that are going to call, look out, liable li li to call you a fool. So uh, be, be aware. Be, uh, oh, there, there, are, there are verses we'll get to that may call you a fool. So uh, look, it says, he that hideth hatred with lying hide it. He that hideth hatred with lying lips. It's like a uh, lack of charity. And, you know, hate, hate, hatred is a uh, work of the flesh, according to Galatians chapter 5. It, you, you can harbor hatred and not really define it. It can be there. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, you know, you might have hatred, but you're going to, say something that kind of covers that up to smooth it over, whatever. Uh, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. A slander is a malicious false report. Utter a slander is a fool. That's what fools do. Uh, Proverbs 12. Verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. 
The way of the fool is right. You know, they're just, just tramping, isn't it? There's people, they're, 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 just, they're going about doing their own thing. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. And what we have beginning in this verse is a contrast. Look again at the verse and see if you see the contrast. You have a fool is right in his own eyes, and he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. So you have a fool, and then the contrast is the foolishness, the fool to wisdom. That's the contrast. Fool to wisdom. Proverbs 12. It's 13. Proverbs 13, verse 16. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. Proverbs 14, verse 3. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. There's the contrast again between foolishness and wisdom. Verse 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man. That's hard to do. I mean, it can be done, but it's hard to do. You probably hang out with some fools. <laughs> um, that's what it says. Go from the presence of them. If, you, if you've established the fact that they're fools and there's, you know, you, you've, uh, say, they're, say they're fools. I think we owe it to them to be an ambassador for Christ and let them know that Christ died for their sins. But it could, be a, say, it could be a brother or sister in Christ, too, that's acting like a fool. But um, go from the presence of a foolish man. Yeah, it's like Paul says, you know, he, he, if, if he didn't have any ministry somewhere, he shook off the dust of his feet. He, he hit the road. He went somewhere where there's going to be some profitable ministry taking place. If some people don't want to receive it, they don't want to receive it. The Bible even says, let the ignorant be ignorant. Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceiveth not in him the lips of knowledge. That was verse 7. Verse 9. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. Fools make a mock at sin. Uh, if you thought about that for... It wouldn't take you very long to think about that and just see how widespread that is, that fools make a mock of sin. I won't even mention the examples where you can find that sin is made a mo is, is mockery. It's just, in our, it's just in our face. Proverbs 15. Verse 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, the grievous words stir up anger. Verse 2, the tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of the fools poureth out foolishness. I mean, it like, can be like a gusher. Yeah, it's usually not just one thing. There's a lot of it. It poureth out foolishness. Proverbs 22 Proverbs 22, verse 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Uh, yeah, I know some young parents that uh, may come to grips with that fact. It's, it's not me saying it. It's the Word of God. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. No. Uh, I've had children. Was there foolishness? There's a lot of it. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Chapter 24. Verse 9. The thought of foolishness is sin. <laughs> wow. You know, God's lowering, lowering the boom here. The thought of foolishness is sin. And the scorner is an abomination to men. Chapter 28. Again, the title is, of the message is, Don't be a fool. Don't fall into these things. 
And we're actually going to take a look at how not to fall into them and what happens if you fall into foolishness. Proverbs 28, verse 26. He that trusted in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Again, there's that contrast between foolishness and wisdom. So if you're acting foolishly, being a fool, involved in, in, in foolish behaviors or others that have them, uh, you go find wisdom. And where do we get the wisdom? From the Word of God to, to know how to deal with the situation. He that trusts us in his own heart is a fool. Well, it didn't take me very long to figure out that, uh, you know, the, the, the way I thought I had f things figured out was wrong with a capital W. Yeah, you know, young men, young women, you know, they, you, we, we think we know it all. We don't, you know, full of ourselves, that kind of thing. Yep, yep. Beverly's shaking her head. Yeah. Anyway, it says, uh, he that trusted in his own heart is a fool. Isn't that nice? We have the word of God, the word of truth, uh, that God himself wrote that we can count on, we can believe it. And yeah, it's uh, like the song says, my faith has found a resting place, not in device or creed. Okay, next book to the right, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 12. And I turn myself to behold wisdom in madness and folly for what can the man do that cometh after the king even that which hath been already done then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly as far as light excelleth darkness now there you want a contrast that's it lightness and darkness yeah, we're, you know as, as a believers you can rest in the fact that God says we've been delivered from the power of darkness. As far as light excelleth darkness. See, you have to come up, you have to conclude that too. There's the words on the page right there. It says, light excelleth darkness. You have to go, I agree. I believe that. Light excelleth darkness. Verse 14. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. I think the one event is that Christ died for their sins and God made a way, way out to, to escape the being a fool. He's provided for us salvation. He's provided for us a word, the word of, his, word of truth that enables us to live a life that honors and pleases him. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Verse 4, when thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. So if you're going to say, well, I'm, you know, I'm going I'm to get this information, I'm going to apply it in my life, I'm going to live a life to honor and please God. It says, you, it, it's somewhat like a vow, you know. It, you, you make a conscious decision that this, this is what I'm going to do. Verse 5 says, Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that shouldest vow and not pay. But God hath no pleasure in fools. Verse 4 says, But he does, God does have pleasure, and we know where it is. In Philippians 2.13, it says, For it is God that worketh in you. If you believe and you take the word in, he's doing the work, for it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his own good pleasure. It's his pleasure. We serve at his pleasure, right? I've heard that before. Ecclesiastes 10. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 3. Yea, also, when he that is a fool walketh by the way, his wisdom faileth him. 
So in the end, their wisdom is not going to do them any good. And he saith to every one that he is a fool. It's kind of laid out in the open that he's a fool. Verse 14. A fool also is full of words. A man cannot tell what shall be and what shall be after him. Who can tell him? Fools don't want to generally listen. They don't want to hear that Christ died for their sins. They don't want to hear the gospel. And if you ever tried to talk to someone like that, you know, give them, give them the information, give them the gospel, and they just come back, and what's their response? Well, the response often is what it says right there. A fool is also full of words. It's uh, like subterfuge. You know, let me change the subject. Let me get over here. Let's do this. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to forget that you said that Christ died for my sins or I should be concerned where I'm going to spend eternity or that there's a resurrection and a judgment coming. Let's put that, I'm going to quickly forget that and let me give you a whole bunch of words to get you off of this. It's almost like a, a politician, right? When they're asked a direct question and they're really good at, you know, avoiding the question. So uh, that's what's happening there. A fool also is full of words. A man cannot tell what he shall be. He doesn't know where he's going and what shall be after him. Who can tell him? It's not easy, but we can. The answer is we can. Because you never know. You can't conclude that someone is not going to uh, listen and believe. And the, the example of that is in Acts chapter 17 when Paul was in Athens and he preached about the resurrection and it said, uh, some mocked, some said, I will hear this matter again. And some said, and some believed. There's, <laughs> there's always that chance. And I mean, you believed, right? Jeremiah chapter 4, a little bit further to the right, just past Isaiah. There are some goals in mind for this this morning as we take a look at the word fools and foolishness, and we'll... And hopefully you'll be able to, I'll, I'll point some of the goals out to this study as we get to them. But uh, knowing that there's a lot of foolishness out there, it's almost like uh, in Titus chapter 2 when uh, Paul exhorts old men to be sober. Paul exhorts young men to be sober. Paul exhorts old women to be sober. Paul exhorts young women to be sober. You know, these are things, there's things in the Bible that we need to think about with sobriety. Jeremiah chapter 4, where's, where's everything in the Bible should be thought about uh, with sobriety. Here's God's not happy here. Verse 20 says, destruction upon destruction. Verse 22 says, for my, my, for my people is foolish. You know, I've read that a few times, and it looks like to me that God is using the wrong form of a verb there. Look at it. For my people is foolish. Shouldn't that be my people are foolish? Well, it shouldn't be if God says it is. So just because I don't understand why is is in there doesn't change it. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. If you don't know God, the bottom line is you're, you're foolish. You're being foolish, and... You know, you want a nice bottom line to people that have no interest in knowing God. They're, they're being foolish. They are sottish children. The word sottish means dull and stupid. And you know what the word uh, in German is for stupid, right? Stupid. They have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. You want an indictment against, uh, an indictment for unsaved people? Jeremiah 4.22. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof. If ye can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. Verse 2. And though they say, The Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. Verse 3, O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Verse 4, therefore I say, surely these are poor. They are foolish. 
the bottom line to the matter. For they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. Another indictment. It's like, you know, when you, when you get, I guess in, in court, if you've got an indictment against you, I mean, there's more than one count normally. I mean, they pile them on. Count number one, count number two. This is another count in the indictment of the, the unsaved. Matthew chapter 7 we want to take a look at what the, what the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was on earth, thought about fools. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man. There's that contrast again. Which built his house upon a rock. We all know these verses. I mean, verse 25, And the rain descended and the floods came. It's like Mantanzas Inlet and the people up there that build their houses on the sand. The rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house. You can write out in the, in the, uh, in, in the margin there in Matanzas. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Well, good. Mentans is not. not what? Verse 26, And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. So, Jesus Christ there on earth is saying, You don't listen to me, you're like a foolish man. Take heed. Okay, Pauline, what does Paul have to say about fools? This is where, it, you know, it uh, gets a little thicker here. A little, maybe a little more interesting. We've concluded from Psalms and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and Jeremiah and Matthew that uh, being a fool is uh, a concern of God's. He, he devotes time to uh, calling out fools. His, are we able to call out fools? Uh, we, uh, you know, who's going to call a fool a fool? Well, that's, that's hard to do, isn't it? You have to kind of think through that and, and see what you come up with. Okay, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. We all have a God consciousness. Everyone does, for God has showed it to them. Verse 20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. <coughs> because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was darkened professing themselves to be wise or above it all I don't I don't need that have you ever run into anybody that they they don't I don't know if they're going to tell you that in so many words but they kind of beat around the bush I don't need that professing themselves to be wise they became fools it's harsh isn't it a lot of what's written in the Word of God is harsh, and you know the Word of God is negative towards man and positive towards God. He doesn't think much about man and man's natural state. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 's a whole lot of foolishness going on in this passage starting in verse 18 so follow along for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us that which are saved is the power of God and I want you to keep in mind as we read down uh, through this it says the look at it, it says the have you have you wondered that before the preaching of the cross to them that perish foolishness well it's their opinion of it okay and look at look at it it builds on that. Verse 19, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wild and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish 
the wisdom of the world. For after that, in the wisdom of God, by the world, by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Have you, have you ever wondered that before, why God would call it the foolishness of preaching? Is what we do here foolishness? Well, it depends on your perspective. I know people that would think that what we do is foolishness. Well, okay, They're, they can have their opinion of that. I don't. I don't. I certainly don't see it that way. We make an authoritative proclamation uh, based upon a book that we believe in a God that uh, that loves us and gave Himself for us. Verse twenty-two: <clears throat> For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified under the Jews a stumbling block, and under the Greeks foolishness. More foolishness. They, that's what the Greeks thought. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For we see your calling, brethren, how not many wise men after the flesh, not many noble not are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world. See, the world sitting out there going, all this, all this spiritual stuff, this Bible that you proclaim is just foolishness. But what, what, what does that do? You know what that does? When they, when, you know why they proclaim it foolishness? It tells us right here. Because they're confounded. They try as hard as they can try to come up with a reason why this m means anything, and it confounds them. It's like Paul on the road to Damascus. Uh, uh, Jesus told him it's hard to kick against the pricks. He was confounded, but the pricks got him. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. There's a lot of confounding going on. Chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 18, Let no man deceive himself, if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world... Let him become a fool, that he may be wise. He needs to realize his status. Lost people need to know that they're lost, that they're sinners, and according to this verse, they need to know that they're fools. You know, we may not have come to that conclusion before we got saved. I don't remember myself thinking, uh, you're a fool. But according to the Word of God there, that's a conclusion that could have been reached, that he may be wise, for the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God, for it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Chapter 4. And this is where the judgment part comes in, that I mentioned earlier. Chapter 4, verse 3. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or man's judgment. Yeah, I judge not my own self. Okay, that's the stamp of I'm a fool. You don't, need, you don't need to put that stamp on yourself because a stamp, if you're, act, if you're a fool and you're acting like a fool, you're involved in foolishness, God's going to put the stamp on it. If you don't want God's stamp, then you stay away from his word and you don't, and, and you just, he's stamping you, but you don't know it. Verse 4. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judges me is the Lord. Verse 10. Here's an interesting verse here too. It says, we're fools for Christ's sake. That's what Paul says. Have you ever looked at that verse and go, am I a fool for Christ's sake? <laughs> well, again, whose opinion is that? Would that be your opinion? I am a fool? Well, I don't think so. I think the opinion there, that's the world's. But we are wise in Christ, we are weak, but ye are strong, ye are honorable, but we are despised. We are fools for Christ's sake. That's the way they look at They won't look at me. How are you going to feel if somebody looks at you like a fool? You're going to go, I don't want to be looked at like a fool, even though it's the worldly standard of looking like a fool. So I'm not going to do that again because I don't want to look like a fool, right? I don't want to look like a fool. But, but uh, Paul says that's what we do. We are fools for Christ's sake. Galatians chapter 3, verse 
This is an example of foolish behavior of a believer. Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. O oh, foolish Galatians. You know, he didn't just say a couple or a, a few. He looks like he's, the, the indictment there is, again, you know, it's widespread and sweeping. It's a sweeping indictment against the Galatians. Who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? It's, uh, what's going on there is they were, they trusted Christ as their Savior, and then they just, uh, wanted, uh, they forgot that, uh, they were his workmanship, and they wanted, uh, they wanted some religion. Let me, or, 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 let me see what I can do for God. He got a good deal. He's going to get to see what I can do. That's foolish behavior. Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Let me show you what I can do. Don't be a fool. Okay? Don't be a fool. We've got a couple of things. We'll close. But the couple of things usually take a few minutes. Titus chapter 3. Don't be a fool. Titus chapter 3. Verse 3, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. A lot about our life as a believer has to do with now and the past. God says that we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. But we were more than that. The operative word is were. We were disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. God through Paul tells us that that should be our past experience. We were foolish. So... What he's saying there is don't digress. Don't go back to any of those things. We know what the Word of God says, so we shouldn't be disobedient to it. We should not be deceived in the different ways that we can be deceived. Don't go back to it. But we're saved by faith. Don't digress. We're saved by faith. We're a new creature. And look at verse 4. Todd had this verse last week. The definition of grace. But after that, based upon all our past, we were all those things. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done. Grace. Grace took over. We became new creatures in Christ. We have a new spirit. And... There's abundant grace. It says, But according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Don't be a fool. Don't, don't regress to what we were. Based upon being a new creature in Christ, a new spirit in us, in God's abundant grace. Proverbs chapter 4. Go there and also put, uh, put a mark in Ephesians chapter 5. These will be the last two verses we look at. Proverbs 4. We probably all heard the term uh, walk circumspectly. Okay, that, that's been thrown, thrown around a lot. It's, of course, it's in the Bible. So what, is, what does it mean to walk circumspectly? I'd say the, uh, the best uh, down-to-earth example I ever heard of it was, uh, have you ever seen a cotton field? I mean, I, I don't think I, I've only seen cotton fields a couple of times in my life. 
And you know, we even have them in North Florida. I didn't know that. But say you're up in Alabama and uh, all the rattlesnakes have been pretty well eradicated where I live. When I first moved out in, there in the woods years ago, there were a lot of them. I haven't seen one in, I don't think, decades now. But uh, they say that uh, in Alabama and North Florida and out those, you know, the piney areas uh, with the cotton, there are a lot of rattlesnakes. And the example of walking circumspectly was if you're going to walk out there and start picking that cotton, you better walk circumspectly and know where your feet are. And I used to do that in the woods too. I had a nice pair of snake boots. But you need to know where your feet are when you walk. And that's the example of walking circumspectly. But even better than that, look how the Bible defines it for us. Walking circumspectly. Proverbs 4. Verse 24. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips out far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Verse 26, ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. I think that's a good definition for walking circumspectly. Let thy ways be established, ponder the path of thy feet. Which way are you headed in your life as a believer? Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly. The next three words, not as fools. This is coming straight from the Apostle Paul. You can either walk circumspectly or you can either walk as a fool. So can we be a fool? Can we? Well, according to that, we can. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. There's the contrast again between foolish behavior and behavior based upon wisdom. Redeeming the time before the days, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. How to not be a fool, it says walk circumspectly. Redeem the time. Make the use out of the time that we have. Seems pretty simple, but it's clear. Redeem the time. Make, if you're not making great use of the time right now, then make better use of the time. And then understanding what the will of the Lord is. And the good cross-reference for that is... Uh, Paul, Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 7 says, consider what I say. <laughs> Boy, you want a broad sweeping statement. He says, consider what I say and the Lord give the understanding in all things. Yep, let's pray. Father, we do thank you that we can have understanding uh, so we don't have to be a fool. We can live a life that pleases and honors you and we thank you for that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.